Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're painting Sunrise Poppy Field, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Spike Seltzer. So let's get painting, let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are Titanium White, Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Green Oxide, chrome yellow, fire red, and burnt umber, which I'll call brown. And of course you can switch those up, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For brushes today, I am going to be using three brushes. I have a half inch wide bristle brush, I have a number eight round brush, and I have a number two round brush, but you can certainly switch up those sizes. I'm gonna call them small, medium, and large throughout the painting process. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I do have some additional resources for you down below in the description. So one of them is a link where you could purchase this entire kit um, that I'm using right down to the fancy palette that I use and the same colors and brushes and all that good stuff. It's convenient and affordable, so that's there for you if you want. Um, there's also a free downloadable um, image of the final painting. So you could just print that and use it as a visual reference as you go through the painting process as well as written step-by-step -step instructions. And that is all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint our sky. We're gonna be using our large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are blue and white, but I'm also gonna be using some red yellow and brown as well. I'm gonna get this to be like um, the, the like a sunrise kind of sky with some clouds going by. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna bring my sky down, I, I would say about a third of the way. Um, and so to know how far that is, if you take your canvas and say, okay, this is about halfway, I'm gonna come up just a little bit from that and I'm gonna make a mark. I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue paint on my brush and make a mark. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side, but I can use my brush as like a measuring tool to get it kind of the same height. So now I know that I don't really wanna go past that. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with blue and white on my brush and I'm gonna get most of the sky in. I am gonna leave a area around here that I want to be on the lighter side so I'm not going to really put too much paint in through there and then I'm going to start adding some clouds but you'll see how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to start with blue and white on my brush and I'm going to start up at the top of my canvas just so I can kind of get an idea of what color is coming off my brush and I know that I want this to look like there's clouds going by so I'm going to start using a circular type brush stroke as I'm coming down my sky. And I'm not using a lot of paint. Um, and the reason I'm not using a lot of paint is because I want it to dry kind of on the fly so I can start adding more colors onto it. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red with my blue right now. And you're gonna see I'm gonna start to get this kind of like a purpley hue, which is gonna look like a really beautiful cloud floating by. I'm gonna start to use maybe a touch of brown on my brush with that blue. The blue's kind of my base um, that I'm using, but I definitely want to incorporate these other colors as well. And at some point, I'm gonna start using maybe a little red and yellow to make it look like there's a little bit of an orange type hue in through there. And going back to my blue and red right now, getting myself some cool clouds just drifting by and you know maybe being illuminated by that sun that's starting to come over the, the hills. And I just added a little bit more white and I'm just gonna kinda keep 
alternating these colors. Right now I'm gonna put a touch of red and yellow on my brush, maybe get a little bit of this kind of a rustic, rusty kind of color, maybe a little bit of brown and blue, and you can really get it to go really pretty dark in some areas. Um, I am gonna put some pops of some, some lighter colors, but this definitely, it sets the mood. You know, you can have a, a very moody sky, and I think this is kind of what this is to me. I know I'm gonna have my, my sun rising over in through here. Um, I do wanna caution you, because I it just came to my head, I put a little bit of yellow on my brush. You want to be careful with using so many colors on your brush because it could end up like a big muddled mess, um, especially green or uh, yellow. I know I have blue on my brush somewhere, so I can very easily by accident have a green sky if I'm not careful. So by using very little bit of paint on your brush during this process, you get to control whether or not you're gonna make a muddled mess. So I am using just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of paint. And what this is gonna do is, one, it dries fast, so I don't really run the risk of making too much of the colors blending too much together. But two, it also um, gets the paint off of my brush quickly. So I'm going over into this corner, and this is where I'm gonna to start to use a little bit more yellow and white. I know, again, I want my sun somewhere in this area. I do want to put some paint there, but I don't necessarily want it to be too dark. I just put a little bit more white on my brush as I'm going through here, and I'm gonna get this to be a little bit maybe orangey over here on the right side. But again, you can have fun with these colors. They don't have to be exactly as you're seeing them on my canvas. You could get them to be more you maybe yours is a beautiful blue sky that even the sun is coming up it doesn't have to have this drama in it like i'm creating you could have yours all just nice and subtle and have the brilliant blue and have it turn lighter colors as it's coming down into where the sun is coming up and i'm just adding a couple more darker spots over here just because i want a little bit more of that mood entered into my painting here um, and again I like to do layers so I'm just going to kind of keep adding these little bits of paint in you know in almost kind of sections that overlap one another um, I am running into a little bit of a greenish hue because I had some blue left over on my brush but I'm okay because I'm not adding too much to it um, I do want to add maybe some little pops of this yellow and orange up here too. And again, just have fun with it. They don't all have to go up in this kind of diagonal formation that I'm doing, but I think this looks pretty neat. And I'm gonna just kind of fiddle with it for another minute or two. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So when you get your sky as beautiful as you want it to be, you can wash and dry this brush, but let me just, I wanna tackle this corner just a little bit more up here, putting a little bit more of this blue. I like this blue and red combination. It's, it's adding a, kind of a, a, a nice morning warmth to it. Um, and I'm excited to put that sun on in a little bit, so I'm just kind of fiddling because that's what I do. And then again, I'm gonna um, wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our land um, with our big brush, and I'm gonna use black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna work my way towards the top. I am going to be making like a little bit of a hill when I get to the top and I'm just gonna make it intuitively. I'm not gonna um, draw any outline for it or anything. I'll probably have it coming up a little bit on this side of the canvas and maybe have a little bump or two bumps or something over on this side. But I'm gonna have it all the way into the sky because um, I want my morning sunrise to kind of look like it's almost coming over a little valley or something. 
I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna start at the bottom with black and green on my brush at the same time. And I um, really am not going to be super concerned about how awesome this layer looks um, because we're gonna be covering it with all kinds of other details. This is just um, what I refer to as my primer coat. Um, I just picked up green, but now I'm picking up green and brown. I want this to be really dark and earthy green color at the bottom. Um, I do wanna caution you though that the use of black is kind of dangerous because it can very easily overpower um, these other paint colors. So I used it in the beginning, but I probably won't pick it up again because I want this to get lighter and lighter as it goes up. So right now I'm just picking up green and brown and I'm just applying the paint in like a circular swirly kind of brush stroke. I don't wanna have lines of color, which is why I'm kind of backing into my previous section. Um, and then once I've done an area with green and brown, now I'm just gonna pick up green. And what I'm gonna, ooh, I think I just flung paint across my studio. I like it when that happens. <laughs> um, so I'm just picking up green right now, and you can see I'm kind of backing it back into the previous section. I don't wash my brush during this type of step. Um, what will naturally happen is those dark tones from the bottom will start to work their way off of my brush. Um, my goal is I want the lighter part to be at the top, but I want the lightest part to be over here as if that sun when it comes peeking up is gonna illuminate that grass in through there. So you'll see what I do when I get to there. But right now I'm gonna pick up green and yellow and this is gonna be my next transitional color as I go up towards the top of this field or this grassy area, whatever you want to call it. I'm considering it to be this big, huge poppy field um, that I'm just gazing at. And probably if it was me being there for real, I'd be taking a million and one photographs of it. But you can certainly imagine it to be whatever you want. And if it's in the morning, which I'm portraying, of course, I'm hearing all the birds chirping and, you know, having fun with this with this step, just kind of getting lost in my imagination. Um, so now that I'm almost towards the top, you can see how I kind of arced it a little bit. I'm gonna not pick up green again, I'm just gonna pick up yellow. And now it's gonna start to really get nice and vibrant at the top. As I get towards that tippy top, I am gonna start kind of creating my um, horizon line. And what's gonna happen with just green and yellow on your brush, if you don't start using white, it's gonna be see-through and you're gonna see that horizon line. So before I really get into um, making that as perfect as I want it to be, I'm gonna use some of the yellow over on this right side and get this to start blending before I put white on my brush. Because I know as soon as I start putting white on my brush, it will um, start to get softer looking and start to blend a little bit more. So I definitely, I'm waiting till I'm ready to use that. And I feel like I'm pretty ready. Um, so I'm gonna start putting a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And this is where I'm gonna start to give myself this little horizon line. Maybe I got a little bit of a hill over here. Maybe this is not, maybe this is just a little bit more on the level kind of side. I am gonna put a little bit more green, yellow, and white on my brush. I don't want this to go too, too light over here. I really want this center area to be the lightest. So I did add back a little bit of green. I'm gonna bring this one up just a little bit more. Like there's maybe distant, a little distant hill, little distant trees, making sure I've got some of that green incorporated over here. So when I do go to do that center area with the white, it's really gonna stand out the most. So right now I'm putting yellow and white back on my brush, and here I go just kind of getting into this really bright area in the center. And next I'm gonna put just white on my brush. So, oops, that was just yellow. 
sorry about that, just white I really meant. Um, so I picked up, I wiped off the yellow and picked up some white. I want this to be really, really, really vibrant right where I'm gonna be putting my sun. So maybe yours is a little bit more over to the right, maybe yours is more towards the center, wherever you'd like it to be. I like mine off center a little bit. Um, and I think I'm gonna pop these hills up just a little bit more. And this was what I was talking about earlier, that intuitive part. If you feel like you want your hills to be a little bit more kind of um, encapsulating that, that sunrise, feel free to do so. If you want yours to be more flat land, like, I don't know, you're out west somewhere, because there's flatlands out in the western part of the United States, which is where I live, just to clarify what I meant by that. <laughs> um, but I don't know if they have poppy fields out there, so maybe that doesn't make sense at all. Um, but we are going to be using our, let's see, what brush are we gonna be using next? We're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you get this base coat of your land down, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we are painting our sun, which you might already have something that looks kind of like it, um, and we're enhancing it so it really looks nice and vibrant and, and so the, we can see the sun rays coming up and it really gives it a cool and a, and a beautiful effect in my professional opinion. So I'm gonna be using my big brush, I'm gonna be using white, and yellow paint and I might if I feel I need to or want to bring some red into it too but definitely white and a little bit of yellow um, my biggest tip that I can give you for this step is don't use a lot of paint you just need a very teeny tiny bit um, so even though we're using a bigger brush you can just use the corner of it. You don't have to use the whole thing. You can just use the corner or you could switch to your medium brush, but I'm gonna be using this because it's a firm brush and I'll be able to pull out my sun rays. So here we go. I'm gonna start with just a little bit of white paint, so little that I wiped it off on, my, on the side of the palette. I'm gonna decide where I want that nucleus of my sun to go. So I think I want it to go somewhere about here. So I'm just gonna take my white paint and because it's white, if you bump into the grassy hit, um, field area, don't worry about it. And I'm really just kind of rubbing it out so I have the area in which I want the, the whole sun to take up. And again, I'm just making this to be like a sunrise, like it's just peeking its head over those hills and you know, telling everybody it's time to wake up. So all the little creatures are gonna start waking up as long as the roosters don't wake up, we'll, we'll have a good time. Um, and then once I have that kind of nucleus area, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna start incorporating just a teeny tiny bit of yellow. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white and it just, I mean like a teeny tiny bit of yellow. And this is gonna add what I refer to as the glow around the outside of the sun. And I'm just kind of lightly blending it in with the edge of my sun. And then what I can do is I can start pulling it out as if it's casting a glow on whatever the clouds or whatever else is next to it in the atmosphere that is surrounding it. If you want it to be even more vibrant, the um, higher contrasting color next to the white is gonna make it pop out more. So if I wanted it to pop out a little bit more, I could certainly add a teeny tiny bit of red, maybe some more of that yellow, almost like an orangey type mixture. And I could pull some like little orangey type clouds near it which is gonna give the illusion of it being brighter. So that intensity is really a visual preference for you, um, but the biggest goal is to just have soft edges around that sun. And if you run into trouble, what I, I want mine to be a little bit brighter, so I just washed and dried my brush, make sure it's really dry. I'm adding a teeny bit more of that white 
just so I can make sure it is as bright as I want and that I have a nice even kind of arc to it. You don't want it to look square. You definitely want it to have a little bit of an arc to it. And then you just kind of fiddle with that until you have it the way that you want. Now we got to do those sun rays. So I am just going to take a tiny bit of the white. Again, I don't need a lot. You could even do white with a touch of yellow. That It's totally up to you what type of um, color you want on it. And the rays are going to come out of the nucleus or the center of the sun. So this sun to me is probably the nucleus or the center is probably about here. That's where all of my rays are going to come out. So the easiest one to do is the one going straight up. So I'm just going to lightly pull from the center up and then I'm going to keep directing from my finger these gentle rays. You can even hear I'm like rubbing my brush right now. From my finger, that's where they come from. It's okay if you pull a little bit of that yellow like I said. Um, I'm adding just a teeny tiny bit more paint because I almost don't have enough on my brush right now. And they can be long. You could, and, they, and you can have short ones in between. It's totally up to you. You can have as many as you want. They could be vibrant. They could be subtle. It's, you know, a visual preference on your part. And you make them as dominant or subtle as you want. And then we are going to be switching brushes to the uh, medium brush for the next step. So when you get your sun rays on here, you can put this large brush away and you can get out your medium brush and get ready for the next, whoops, get ready for the next step. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the first layer of the petals to our flowers. So I'm gonna be using my medium round brush I'm gonna be using red and brown paint. Um, and before we start, I do wanna kinda of caution you that you do wanna make sure your canvas is dry before this step. Um, it probably is, but if it's not, you, you know, you could just take a break and have another sip or maybe you could blow on it. <laughs> just kidding. Um, or you could just take a blow dryer and that certainly speeds up the process, but you wanna make sure that that's dry. So. As we're doing these um, these poppies, we want I'm going to want to give it a lot of perspective. So I'm going to have my flowers really big at the bottom, which means that they're going to be close to me, and then very small as they get up towards the top of my um, of my land. And for me, I'm going to leave a little bit of area at the top of my land that doesn't have poppies on it. So it's going to give the illusion that this is just a flat field filled with flowers and then maybe this other land that bumps up is just a distant hill or something that didn't have its poppies planted on it. Um, and while we're doing this, this first layer is just the base coat. So when it doesn't look awesome after you're done this step, don't worry because <laughs> it will get better. This is just meant to be like what I refer to as the primer coat. Um, and your paint might be a little see-through, so you might see some of the green below it or some of the yellow, don't worry about that. And I am choosing red and brown as like a darker shade of red because I'm gonna have nice, beautiful red poppies. But I, I do know that poppies have multiple different color options, so if you wanna do a different color than red, feel free to do so, but I've chosen to do the most popular of them all, which is red. So, um, as we're doing this, it's going to be a, a real free-flowing kind of brush stroke. I don't want you to think too hard um, as we're going through this. Again, we're going to do some big ones in the in the front or in the bottom of your canvas and get them smaller and smaller. And while you're doing these, I know that poppies have big, floppy, like thin petals. Unlike maybe a daisy that has 76 little petals, poppies, believe it or not, only have four petals, which I didn't know that until recently. Um, but so when I'm doing this, I'm not necessarily counting, oh, I need to have four petals on here, but I know that it can be kind of like a big mass because these are big floppy petals. 
So here we go. I'm gonna just kind of start. And they don't, you're not looking down on everyone, so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You can kind of look at the side. It's just a messy shape. So here I go, I'm gonna put red and brown on my brush at the same time. For me, because I have kind of a focal point over here, I'm gonna put my bigger flowers here um, and maybe they'll get smaller as they go through there. So I'm just gonna kind of start with, you know, maybe that's one petal, maybe I reload my brush often. Maybe this is another petal in through here. And they don't all have to be individual petals. You can make, maybe I'm gonna do one in this direction. Maybe this is, you know, just a kind of a mushy. The bottom base of it looks something like that. Maybe I've got a couple of smaller ones in through here. Maybe you do one that's kind of four petals looking at you. Maybe I've got, you know, a, a wiggly one over here that's got a big top to it. Really, just have fun with these shapes. I'm gonna show you how to take this seemingly messy shape and make it look like it's a like it's a flower. But right now I'm just kind of get I'm just concerned about getting my shapes on. I got a couple of little ones in the ground over here and that, those are going to be my main flowers and now as I'm starting to get farther and further away, I'm really not even thinking petals. I'm just thinking I need a smaller mark as I'm going away and I like to skip around because if I sit and do this they're going to be really systematic and that's not what mother da mother nature does so I'm just going to kind of start wiggling my brush making sure I've got enough paint on it and this is where it kind of becomes like a little impressionistic kind of um, assortment here I'm going in between some of these I'm gonna to start to make them a little bit sm even smaller in a second here. They can touch one another. I'm just really using my brush to make these little dabs and dashes. And then I'm gonna really start to make a whole bunch of them up and through here. Maybe just little tiny polka dots. The, the, Best part about this or the one of the best tips I can give you is variety. Variety in your sizes, in your shapes, um, you know, just have fun with this. I don't know if, you know, many of you are familiar with the movie, in my opinion, that made poppies so popular um, was the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> which is one of my favorite movies. And it also probably gave poppies a bad rap because I think they're known for some kind of, um, like, I don't know, dangerous kind of chemical that's in them that might put you to sleep or something, which is what it was depicted in The Wizard of Oz. Um, but I think they have some good medicinal values too. So. They, they're definitely beautiful. So that's definitely a good, you know, a good thing that they have going for them. And again, I'm just kind of sporadically adding all these little red marks. I just keep going and going and going. And you might find like, oh my God, I feel like I've put too many. There's never enough poppies. Just put as many as you want into this. At just taking me back to the Wizard of Oz once again. So I remember that poppy field. Oh my God, there was millions of poppies and they made, the, they made them fall asleep, I think. And I don't know how they woke up. Duh. I don't know. I don't know. My brain goes all over the place, especially when I'm painting stuff like this. So um, again, I'm going to leave mine a little bit without poppies at the top because I want this to kind of look like it's a hill. 
I'm not pressing hard at this point. I'm just really using the tip of my brush. You might even want to switch brushes as you get up towards these smaller ones. Um, if your brush is making your marks too big for, for your liking, you can certainly switch brushes to the small brush. But again, I'm just kind of dotting away. This is gonna take me another minute or two to get as many on here as I want. Um, I have to kind of concentrate so I don't push my brush too, too hard. That's, the, that's a trick here. Um, you, and again, you could certainly switch brushes to the small brush if you wanted to. You can overlap these. You can take your brush and almost spin it in your paint. That's gonna make it nice and pointy, but you gotta make sure you have enough paint on there for that to um, be accomplished. I'm gonna totally add some more up here. And again, I don't want it to look like it's too systematic. I am going to, I don't think I've ever done this in a tutorial before. I switched my brush. <laughs> I want to go to the small one. So guess what? If you want to go to the small one too, go right ahead. That's going to totally kill my production team. They don't, they're not going to know what to do with that when I switch brushes midstream like that. But they'll handle it, I'm sure of it. So I'm just gonna keep going and get these small little tiny ones. I just really want them to be tiny, 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 tiny. So I wanted to have that brush, the smaller one. And right now I'm just picking up red as I get towards closer to the sun. So I want it to be a little bit brighter than the ones that were down below. I can't believe this part is taking me so long. I thought this was gonna be the quickest part about it, but I want lots of teeny tiny little dots. So that takes a while. You could, I guess, flick the paint on there if you wanted to. That's gonna do a million little ones. Um, but you can certainly just see I'm having fun here. And we are gonna use um, this small brush for the next step. So once you get your million little, little, tiny, teeny, tiny poppies on here, and you've got some nice big ones representing the close ones, you can wash and dry this small brush, if you decided to use the small brush like I did, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the centers of the flowers. So this is another step where you're gonna to wanna to have it dry before you go on to this step. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna be using black, yellow, and white. So I'm gonna start with black um, and just know that you do not need a center on every flower. Again, our bigger ones are the more important ones and you wanna give the illusion that these are all poppies. So just adding a little black in some of the, the far away ones makes sense. Um, and I'm sure that there's a much more technical term for the centers of these flowers, but it eludes me. So I'm just gonna call them the centers of the flowers. <laughs> So I'm going to start with black um, and how I'm going to do this is it doesn't have to be a circle in the middle of each one of these. Think of this as the inside of the flower that might be covered by some petals. Um, so like this one for instance, I'm going to probably put this one in the center because I know I'm going to have a petal here and I'm going to have a petal here and you'll be able to see it, but it doesn't have to be necessarily a circle. So I'm just going to kind of make it in like a messy little shape. The messier, the better. We can always build um, petals around that, but if it's nice and clean, it makes it a little bit less natural looking. So maybe this one I'm going to have up in this direction. I had a little bit of wet red there, but that's okay. And then I'm just reloading my brush with some black, and I think this spot looks like this would be a cool spot for this one. Like it almost acts, almost looks like it might have some petals coming up off of it. Uh, this one I think I'm gonna put, let's put this one over here. Maybe this is one that we do see head on. Maybe this one over here. Oh, I don't like how that's really, just a circle, this one either. I like them messy. Maybe this one's up at the top. Maybe this one is, we'll put this one 
somewhere in here. And then the rest are gonna be more carefree. So I'm really not gonna even pay much attention. I'm just gonna make some dots every now and again. Some maybe more towards the top, some maybe on the side, maybe one's leaning over. Just you're, you're trying to give the illusion. Maybe some of these are just shadows underneath the flowers as opposed to that center dotty part. Maybe there's you've got several flowers right next to each other or touching each other so there's several centers. And again you don't need to do every single one of them. I'm, I braced myself, my hand just was not going to hit that flower the way I wanted it to so I braced myself with my little pinky on the canvas and I'm definitely gonna not put a ton in through here because I want that to look like it's being illuminated by that sun that's waking up. And then I'm not going to um, use black again. I just washed and dried my little brush. I'm gonna put um, the little pieces in the center of the flower. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Maybe, I think, uh, I think it's like stamen, but I don't, Seeds, I don't know. Hairy things, I don't know. The little things that are inside the centers of the poppies. Oh, maybe they're poppy seeds. Hmm. Maybe I'm onto something. So I put a little bit of yellow and white on my brush and I'm just doing tiny little polka dots um, in the center. And it doesn't have to be the center of the black. Um, you can put it in the center, but it can also be the top of the black, depending on what kind of angle. And just think of these as little speckles or polka dots. Um, I'm hardly touching my canvas, and it's okay if it mushes in with the black a little bit. Totally fine. You just want it to look kind of natural. I, again, I'm not going for photorealism here. I'm just going for the impression that these are in fact poppies and this little black center with some a little bright spot really reads as a poppy. So I that's as far as I need to take the detail in my um, quick painting that I'm doing here. And then if you can get any of these other ones to have a teeny tiny bit of that bright little highlight in there, great. If not, no worries. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. Oh, that was, it looks like there's two little eyes there. Let me get rid of that one. Well then, I just put black on my brush. See, we all, you know, have our own ideas of what looks good and what doesn't. The idea of a little monster creature's eyes in the middle of my poppy did not appeal to me so <laughs> um, but I am going to wash and dry my brush for the next step so if you'd like to come along with me wash and dry your brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're doing for the next step is we are using our, our small brush and we are creating grass and stems so the colors that I'm going to be using are green yellow and white and I'm going to arbitrarily be using those at all times on my brush. So you can just keep picking up those three colors. Maybe one time you pick up green, one, maybe one time you pick up yellow, maybe one time you pick up white. Just keep rotating those colors. I don't need this to be perfect, but I do want to give the illusion that there's lots of grass in here and that my poppies are not floating or levitating. So these stems are gonna to help to ground that. And if you make them too bright or if you feel like they're too bright, you can certainly add some black or brown to it, but I'm gonna try and kind of stick with um, green, yellow, and white. They don't have to come straight up. You do wanna kind of make sure most of your flowers have their own little stem, but you don't have to sit here and do one for one on every single one. But if you wanna make sure those major ones are represented, then go right ahead. Now I'm just gonna have some fun and start flicking my paint. Kinda of getting it all to just look like there's pieces of grass in through here. And because I'm using a smaller brush, I do reload often. 
Um, so that way I have a lot of paint on my brush and I can certainly get a lot of pieces of grass in through here. Um, you do also want to try and not make it look like you're painting around, uh, which is what, in essence, what you're doing, but you want to have some pieces of grass or stems go all the way to the, um, to the flower, or maybe some even go in front of the flower a little bit. So just know this is wild grass. It does not have rules. It just wants to be wild and nobody came and mowed it. The, the, the landscaper has not showed up in this field. I'm sure of it. So this is all different lengths, different brightnesses. Um, but definitely you want to get some to go behind pieces. And if you accidentally bump into one of your um, flowers, don't worry about it. You can certainly, when we're doing the petals later, you can certainly modify that if you need to. Um, and because you do have the dark base down here and the light base up there, that's going to naturally keep the illusion of it being closer down here and you know further away up there. Um, and you just have fun until you feel like you have enough grass represented and you've got enough stems that look natural. Um, this could take you two minutes, it could take you 20 minutes. However long you feel you need to um, take to address the, the, the grass and make sure that it's nice and full. You don't want to um, make these, these flowers look like they're floating. You know, that's, that's my main goal. Get, this, get these flowers so they look like they have, they're nice and nestled into this um, wild grass. And I don't know if you can detect this, but I like to have bendy grass. It goes to the left and to the right and it's, it comes up and it drops. And um, that to me looks a lot more natural than just straight pieces of grass. So I definitely will a lot of times just have this little natural arc to my pieces of grass and I go really fast. Um, and when I go fast, that helps me to not think about it, which in essence is gonna make it look more natural um, because it will just give it whatever natural um, kind of bend my hand does. Um, the more that I think about it, the more it ends up looking kind of systematic, um, you know, and just a, a lot less natural. So I'm pretty happy with this. I don't, you know, you can go further up if you feel like you need a little bit more green or more, you know, representation of of the stems and stuff. But it really is more down here because this is going to be your eye is going to come to this spot and be looking for those kind of details. But when it's up in that higher area, you may feel that you don't need to add too many more pieces of grass or stems. So you use your visual um, observation to tell whether or not you need to add more stuff or not. And then we are going to use this same small brush for the next step. So once you feel like you've got enough grass and stems incorporated here, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the details on our petals. So the, I'm gonna use my small brush and the colors I'm gonna use are obviously red, but I'm also gonna use yellow, white, and brown. So my thought process here is I am going to be highlighting the tips of these flower petals because they're being illuminated by the sun. But I still need a little bit of detail on the other side too. So this inside part or this other side part might be a little bit darker, but my tips that are facing the sun are definitely gonna be the brightest. And I can, on the fly, make a petal out of, so to me, this is like one colored, one mass of color. I can separate it just by putting highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna be using red, again, as my main color. 
I'm going to be using white as my highlight color, but I know that red and white makes pink. And yes, there are pink poppies. I know that for certain. So, but I'm not going for a pink poppy. I'm going for a red poppy. So if I just use red and white, I'm going to end up with a bunch of pink all over my poppies, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I want to counteract that a little bit and yellow will help me do that because it'll add almost like an orangey or take out that pink type tone to it. So I'll be using a little bit of yellow as well. And then the reason I'm gonna use brown is if I want any of these petals that I'm gonna to create to pop out a little bit more and my highlight doesn't do it, I can put a shadow, a, a deeper shadow within the inside of the flower. I know that's a lot of information, <laughs> but I'll show you what I mean. So with this particular one, I'm actually going to put a, its fourth petal. So I have one, two, three petals here. I'm going to actually put a fourth one that's going to cup around the center of that. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a little bit of red, a touch of yellow, and a touch of white. And I don't have much white and yellow on my brush. And I'm going to make this like little like cuppy thing because I know that's the proper terminology for the edge of a petal, is a cuppy thing. <laughs> I make myself laugh sometimes. So that's going to be the edge of that, that petal. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the edge of the other petal, so red, yellow, and white are on my brush right now. And maybe this petal, maybe this one comes down in through here. We'll see what's going to happen in a second. It's like magic red, yellow, and white, just reloading my brush a little bit. I'm going to put another, maybe this petal comes here. And then I, can, I wipe my brush on my paper towel a lot. And then I'm going to take a little bit of brown and I can put this little shadow in between. And now I've got the edge of three petals. Red, yellow, and white's going back on my brush so you can see this petal a little bit more. And I'm just going to fiddle, that's a lot, wiping my brush, with these edges until I can see the edges of my petals. I'm going to put a highlight on the, the top of this one, the back one. I'm spending a lot of time on this one so you can get the gist of what I'm doing, which is, in essence, kind of highlighting the edges that are near the sun or in the direction of the sun. And then if I want there to be any shadows between the petals, I can incorporate that with either red or red and or brown. So now I just took that seemingly one object and I made it into one, two, three petals. So you can do the same with all of them if you want. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different uh, styles, I guess. Um, so this one I think I'm going to just do two on the outside, maybe something like this. And maybe I'm going to add my little highlight. So I'm not using hard, much paint on my brush, which is why I reload a lot. Um, this is the only way that I can control myself because what happens to me is I I get all excited and I'm like, oh my God, it's bright, it's beautiful, I want to keep going. And then I put tons of paint on my brush and then everything turns into one color and then I, ha I have to start all over again. So in order for me to control myself, I mean, I have such a small amount of paint on my brush that I can um, really just be in control the whole time. I just put more white so I can get a nice bright edge over here. And I'm just going to have fun on these main ones. Um, and when I get to the ones that are off in the distance, those are going to be just more impressionistic kind of flowers. You'll see how I tackle those ones, red and white, on my brush here. This is kind of a little bit more floopy on the edges. Another technical term. You can kind of pull it in if you want to give it a little bit of a bend. So I'm turning a little pink here, so I'm going a little red and yellow. I just picked up more red and yellow. Get rid of some of that pink. Again, pink's not a bad thing, but if you are, wanna go more for the 
reddish poppy as opposed to the pink one, you can certainly just keep playing with this, add that little bit of yellow. I think I'm going to have this one coming in front of here. Or maybe I'm going to have this one come like this. Maybe these two, maybe we're almost looking at the front of this one. So you just kind of make them as you go. Figure out what, what petal you want to be prominent, what petal you want to have a nice bright edge. This one's going to have a nice bright edge coming into here. Maybe I need to put a little bit more darkness. If I'm going to see the center, maybe i got to pull some of that dark color. Maybe there's got to be more shadow in here. So really, you're kind of pushing and pulling the light spots and the dark spots in order to get these petals to kind of make their way into their own individuality. So I'm going to move on to this next one here. Just pop on some little bit of lightness on the top there. Maybe a little bit of lightness there. And again, as I get to these smaller, less important, uh, not less important, they're all important, but ones that are not going to draw as much attention, I can certainly, you know, care a little less about those particular details. But again, just making sure that I've got the kind of anatomy or, or Michelle's perception of a of a poppy's anatomy <laughs> onto the canvas. So I think this one maybe, this one's gonna be another one with a big one in through here. Maybe I put a little light edge right here, just to kind of give it, again, its own edge identity for that particular petal. I'm going to have to put some more darkness in the center of that just to connect that center to um, inside. And the front ones obviously are going to take the most amount of time because they're the biggest ones and you want to add the most detail to them. Um, but as you get towards, you'll see in a minute, as we get towards those farther ones, we don't have to add as much detail. I just put a little black on my brush which I know wasn't in the color combination for this, but I wanted to get that center. And then maybe just a little, little pop of a highlight here. Just before I start, once I start rocking and rolling on those back ones, forget about it, I cruise right along. So this is why I'm taking a little bit of time here just to make sure I've got these exactly as I want and they're popping the way they're popping the way that I want my poppies to pop. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Popping the poppies, popping the poppies, pop <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> popping the poppies, popping the poppies, popping the poppies. I know. Popping the poppies, popping the poppies, popping the poppies. <laughs> Alright, so now I, now that I've got these pretty much represented the way that I want them to be. Now I'm just gonna cruise with some little kind of highlights on these other ones. I've got red, yellow, and white on my brush right now and I'm really just free forming, intuitively putting little kind of marks here and there to represent highlights. Um, if you wanted to put some shadows in there, which I think you, you probably wouldn't need to, um, but if you wanted to, feel free to do so. Again, I'm just kind of flipping all around the canvas, making sure I've got some cool bright spots with that white and yellow. Maybe this one's got a little one coming in here. Just kind of moving that brush to give movement to some of these other ones that might um, that you might be able to see a little bit of the detail on them um, but really again it's just about adding these little pops of bright little highlights throughout these these back ones that's a little bit too white for me I'm gonna come back with red in a second but while I've got this color on my brush I'm just gonna kind of keep going through these ones over here just to give you that information. And a lot of these we'd be seeing from the side, which is probably why I am, without even really thinking about it, doing more dashes than I am um, circles. Because to me, when I'm looking at something at a distance from the side and it's getting smaller and smaller, it might almost look more horizontal to me as opposed to circular. 
Um, if we were looking from above, then we'd probably see some circular, a little bit more circular aspect to it. But again, I'm just kind of going through here and I don't need to hit a highlight on every single one, but I definitely want it to be consistent throughout so it's telling the same story um, from one side of the canvas to the other. And I'm just going to pop in maybe some real bright yellow and white in through here, but won't really be able to tell too much there. So I think, I think I might almost be done here. I'm really digging this. I think these are be such beautiful flowers. I think I want a little bit more highlights on some of these. I'm digging this like almost peachy kind of color that has just kind of made its way to my brush and just making sure I've got enough of the red. Um, definitely represented. You can just take red and make sure that you've popped in some really vibrant red spots. Make sure that red hasn't dulled as it has been drying on the background. So I'm just taking a little bit more of the vibrant red and just kind of popping it in here. And then I think that's going to do it. We have one final tiny little step to go, and it's going to be with this small brush. So when you've got your poppies popping as much as you want them to, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the last step. Okie dokie, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom right. I'm gonna be using black paint with my small brush. I'm gonna sign mine with my initials. You might wanna sign yours with your first name or with a, the date or with a symbol, whatever you want. It's your identifying mark. You can sign it whatever way you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your beautiful poppy field. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.